Sam, you talk to executives who've who complain to you about this stage appropriateness thing because it hurts a lot of people, right? It's the reason why so many people execute perfectly in their jobs and get fired because of the great work they did, because you're now not appropriate for the next stage and we need to go find this new CRO who can do it. What are your thoughts on this idea? Like, do you think now over time, has your view changed on stage appropriateness at all? Yeah, it has changed, but, uh, but that's because I used to be a zealot about that it didn't matter at all. Yeah, I remember. And, and I was a zealot that it didn't matter at all, probably because I was over-indexing on, not that I'm so great, but that on on my my history with your scaling. Journey. Yeah, your and journey. where I was able to scale to 300 million, and it didn't even feel like I was doing anything special because GLG had such strong product market fit. And so my experience was like, you know, I was at that company. We went to 300 million. I was there. Stage, uh, stage appropriate uh, experience is a myth, and uh, my my position has definitely moderated uh, over mm -hmm. over time. And generally, the way I would say it is, my perspective is as follows, which is uh, you know somewhat tongue in cheek, but quote unquote, it cannot be everybody's first time. So mm. that's what my perspective is, which is that's really interesting. It's interesting. not on, it's not on an individual basis. It's the composition of the team. I think you have to look at it as a team, as an executive team, as opposed to, uh, you know, one individual. It wow. is the the team should be a mixture of people that have relevant experience that have been there, done that with people that are particularly precocious, super curious, super eager, that know the customer well, mm -hmm. or know you as the founder well, and have deep empathy for you. They understand your style. They can match your style. They understand when to push back, but it can't be all one or the other. And um, we were even in an, in an executive uh, offsite last week, I think, and we were talking uh, with the team about what is the voice that we're missing in the room. And we felt like, and this isn't a knock on anybody because we were saying, what is the voice missing? Not who should be replaced, but what is yeah. the voice that is missing? And where we came out on it, we are missing the experienced financial operator. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, that's, we, we have a lot of different perspectives. We have, you know, energy, we have customer empathy, we have bold, daring ideas, we have process people and non process people. But, but you need, we needed one more person in there to say, when I was at this big company or that big company or this company that's three steps ahead of you, this is what we did and this is why it worked and this is what we didn't, not saying that we should do that here. And so my perspective is, and you know, Travis Bryant uh, teaches a class for CRO school on scaling from zero to a hundred million at Optimizely. So it's definitely possible. It's not a mandate, but it just can't be everybody's first time. There have to be some balancing Absolutely. forces.